It's the Daily Dog. Hey y'all, welcome back to the Daily Dog. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I have a good one for you today, my friends. I would not steer you wrong. We are going to music by Stevie Wonder today, and I am pumped that you are with me. So we're going to be taking a look at Superstition today, and of course, it's a song that I know. How could I not? But we are in the midst of our celebration of Black History Month, and I definitely wanted to include Stevie in this celebration, and Superstition is my favorite song by his, or one of my favorite songs by his. It's it's part of it, you know? Uh, like, which one do you do by Stevie Wonder? It's, it's, uh, it's a difficult choice, but Superstition is a classic, classic song, and I want to break it down with all of you. So, uh, Stevie, of course, a lifelong pioneer and trailblazer in soul, in R&B, in pop, in funk, in gospel, in jazz, progressive soul, you name it, the list goes on and on. He was born in 1950, and he became the youngest person ever to have a Billboard Hot 100 uh, number one uh, single with uh, his song Fingertips when he was just 13 years old. And so, you know, by the time we get to the 1970s, he is at the peak of his critical and commercial success. And so with Superstition, this one is coming from the, the 1972 album, Talking Book. And the song and the album both became number one hits and garnered him his first Grammy Awards. So in this album, uh, Stevie was feeling free to express himself as more of a mature adult performer rather than continuing the uh, uh, youthful prodigy uh, uh, idea that had uh, or persona that had defined his career up to that point. And he said this about uh, this particular song on NPR. He says, I think that the reason I talked about being superstitious is because I really don't believe in it. I didn't believe in the different things that people say about breaking glasses or the number 13 being bad luck and all of those various things. And to those, I say, when you believe in those things you don't understand, then you suffer. And we get uh, superstition, right? Uh, Stevie's use of the Honer Clavinet synthesizer is heard loud and clear on the album, especially on this song and on the original album he plays most of the instruments he he's the lead vocal he plays that honer clavinet he plays the moog bass and yeah i think he's on the drums as well uh on the original recording he was joined by trevor lawrence on the tenor saxophone and by steve Medeo on the trumpet but the uh, the version that we are going to hear today y'all was uh, a live performance in 2009 at the rock and roll hall of fame uh, 25th anniversary celebration concert in New York City. And I picked this version because it includes Jeff Beck on guitar. And I found a really fascinating story about how Jeff is involved with Stevie way back at the beginning, uh, at the creation of this song. Of course, sadly, we lost Jeff earlier this year, and I've done a tribute episode for him uh, earlier. And uh, I just wanted to hear another example of him playing his guitar, you know, so uh, uh, that's why I picked this. But the main reason is because the song was actually the result of a jam session between uh, Jeff Beck and Stevie Wonder. So Stevie, back in the day, preferred to have guest guitarists play on his albums, and he would often engage in uh, collaborations where a, a guest would play on, on his album, and in exchange for them doing that, uh, they would uh, have the ability and the opportunity to record one of Stevie's songs on their album. So Stevie and and, uh, and Jeff are hanging out and they're jamming. And uh, Jeff uh, offered up this beat on the drums and Stevie liked it and he started improvising uh, over the top of it. And most of the song, including the main riff, were improvised on the spot. And the two of them created a rough demo while they were there of the song. And it was decided that uh, Jeff would record the song first with his new trio, uh, Beck, Bogart, and A Piece. Uh, but their album uh, in the subsequent months was delayed a bit. And Barry Gordy was chomping at the bit, y'all. He knew 
that this song was going to be a hit and he wanted it on Stevie's album that was going to be going out. So Stevie ends up recording it and releasing it first. And then, uh, and it was a lead single from, from uh, Talking Book. And then uh, Jeff Beck's version uh, would be released about a half a year later. Uh, so it's going to be great to see them performing this song together all these years later. So I am into it. I don't think I've seen this performance, y'all. I may have back in the day and loved it, but I, I uh, it's not one that, that comes to mind um, right off the bat, which is why I wanted to, uh, another reason why I wanted to listen to it today. So let's go to Stevie Wonder and Jeff Beck performing Superstition live in 2009 in New York for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, uh, 25th anniversary, uh, show. Off we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Oops. ladies and gentlemen, joining us on stage, Mr. Jeff It's a, it's a little lick that just sustains a one chord that when you rhythmize it, just makes you bop along. You can listen to it all day. Let us bop the fall. And halfway through the verse, they up the ante with the lick with the sax and the brass. And then we get to the chorus, and it breaks. Parallel chromatic motion, and then... Solo. There's that warble from him. It makes you know it's Jeff playing. are jazzy.
He's rocking. I absolutely love that. It's good to see Jeff uh, ripping it up on stage. And, and Stevie's still ripping it up on stage to this day. You know, uh, really, really great. You know, uh, I, I, the timing of this uh, back in the day isn't lost on me. You know, the it seems like uh, the intensity of the civil rights era was starting to ebb a bit. And uh, Motown and, you know, this song is a part of it, uh, I think are starting to really become the integration of all of these different streams of musical expression, right? Soul and funk are fusing with jazz and rock and roll, and we get something new and something fresh. And, you know, the 70s would become Stevie's just classic, period. Of course, he's done great stuff his entire career, but Talking Book, Inner Visions, uh, Fulfilling This uh, First Finale, Songs in the Key of Life, uh, with uh, Sir Duke. I almost did Sir Duke, y'all. I mean, it's awesome, too. I mean, that's written in honor of Duke Ellington. It has references to uh, Count Basie, to Glenn Miller, to Louis Armstrong, who we included on the channel recently, Ella Fitzgerald. And, you know, it's just hit after hit after hit. And he's just one of the best of all time. I want to show you a couple of things on the keyboard as to how that overall riff works. One of the things that's really quite interesting about the entire piece is that he's playing it in E flat minor. All the black notes, right? E flat minor pentatonic, right? Is just the black notes. So you get E flat minor as a tonic and you just black notes. Bum 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 beat bum ba da. B flat, D flat, E flat, and G flat. Right? It's just the black notes. And then the main riff that the uh, saxophone and the trumpets, the brass take over, is just the whole thing, too. All black notes, right? Um, and then the cool part is when he starts going into those into the chorus in these parallel uh, what sound like dominant seventh chords to me. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm not sure exactly what he does. Superstition ain't the way. I'm not exactly sure what the last chord is before them. It's some sort of suspended added note chord that uh, is the secret sauce, right? But uh, the, the riffs are pretty approachable and singable and danceable. And, and, you know, 50 years later, we're still grooving to it. And uh, it's still topical, actually, you know? Uh, thankfully, uh, like I said, Stevie is still just ripping it up on stage. Just earlier this week, on Sunday, I saw him at the Grammys. And he was playing with Smokey Robinson. He did uh, The Way You Do the Things You Do in Tears of a Clown with Smokey Robinson in 2023, friends. And they were great. And then he segued into playing Higher Ground with uh, Chris Stapleton, who's a country guy, a southern rocker. So you go in one performance from classic Motown in Smokey Robinson to performing a, a fusion sort of style piece with Higher Ground and Chris Stapleton. It's uh, his range and his reach just uh, know no bounds, do they? Uh, his music continues to have this really, really broad appeal, and he's one of the living legends. Uh, in the music industry. So cheers and thanks to Stevie Wonder for uh, his entire career. And I look forward to what you still got, Stevie. Keep it coming and uh, we'll still be watching. I also am thankful to all of you for hanging out with me today and going through a classic, classic Stevie Wonder song. It has been great to uh, be reminded that superstition ain't the way, y'all. <laughs> it just isn't. Uh, but this song is, and I am happy to have included it here on The Daily Doug. Thanks, y'all, for hanging out with me today, and we will see you next time on another edition of The Daily Doug.